or when you are in opposition, in contradiction. That you can find out. Okay? And if you are able to find out that you are in a state of happiness when you are in harmony, then you want to ensure it in all your living, in all your levels of being, starting from individual to the then is it possible for me to ensure this continuity of happiness right? at all levels of my being, starting from individual to family, to society, to nature, and finally to existence? So these are very real questions for me, and I must have the answer to it. And if I have answer to this, if I have answer to this, then finally I can work out my program of action. That in order to ensure continuity of happiness. I have to understand this harmony at each of these levels and live in harmony at each of these levels. That is something essential for me. And this is with the background that this is already evaluated. Right? That this is not what is going to ensure continuity of happiness. This is what is going to ensure continuity of happiness. So this evaluation is already there at the back of our mind that this will not work, this model has failed and it will always fail. And if you look at the modernity, the modernity is still trying with this model. All your modern education and you know, lifestyle and everything. I keep taking this example that if you look at the achievement of your science and technology, right, what are we basically doing? For example, we made an air conditioner. What is it giving you? It is only ensuring a favorable sensation at the most. <coughs> if it was heat, hot, then you are getting one sensation. Now you have kept it cool with this air conditioner. So it is giving you a favorable sensation. That is all. <coughs> what do you think? If you are sitting in an air conditioner, your relation improves with other human beings? <laughs> Does that take place? No. Right? Similarly, if you have a contradiction in your thought and you are sitting in an air conditioner, will it be dissolved? Not necessarily. So it will not take care of this. It will not take care of this, right? We are only <coughs> taking care of the favorable sensation. That is all the achievement of this technology and science is there. Isn't it? A car which is very soothing, you know, it doesn't have jerks. Right? What does it mean? Favorable sensation. What else? I mean, if you look at it from this perspective, what else is there? Previously you could walk 6 kilometers a day, an hour. Now you can travel 60 kilometers an hour. But when you reach there, what do you talk? Does it improve? You can walk faster, you can move faster. But after reaching there, what are we talking? What are we discussing? Is it talking senses? Is it improving your relationship? And this is what is happening with the mobile today, you know. If you go to visit someone, he is already busy in the mobile, okay. And most of the time he will continue to be busy, right? He will not have time to talk to you. So next time you think it is better to talk to him on mobile. <laughs> <laughs> so we are talking so much, is it ensuring relationship? No. Now which is more fundamental, the relationship or just talking? Relationship. We are talking because we want to improve relationship. Right? We want to ensure fulfillment in relationship. And you have no time for the child. 
in the house. You have no time for the wife, right? And you are all the time busy talking on telephone. I teach this course on electronics and communication, particularly <coughs> the digital communication and the NLR communication, microwave and all this. So when I start this course on communication, I ask, you know, students, it's all engineering students. I ask them, suppose there is a village where there is no television. There is another village where there is only one television. At another village where there is television in every house. And then another village where there is television in every room of the house. <laughs> where the communication will be more? Between the people, among the people. <laughs> Right? So the answer generally is either no television or one television. Okay. So this is very clear that by increasing the mode of communication, right, it is not guaranteed that the communication and relationship improves. So if you look at the whole of your technology and science you know, and the achievements of the science and technology, you can place it only here. It could be used for ensuring right understanding and right feeling in relationship. Right? It can facilitate. But that's not, not, that is not what we are doing. We are, what we are saying is that it is good to have physical facility to ensure the health of the body. Right? It is also good to have physical facility to ensure communication. But what are we going to do this communication for? for ensuring right understanding and right feeling in relationship. That is the use of communication. So we are not saying this will solve the problem, you know, just having physical facility will solve the problem. We are also not saying that the problem is because of the physical facility. Right? What we are saying that we need to understand right, this cell, the need of this cell, that is happiness, and we have to fulfill it by way of right understanding and right feeling in relationship, which is not being done. So in that sense, understanding the self, understanding the need of the self, which is happiness, and trying to work out the program to ensure fulfillment of the need of the self, that is, <coughs> the need of continuous happiness, is important. It is in that sense we have defined all this. So, having desire to ensure continuity of happiness through senses is not going to work. But then having no desire is also not going to work. Why? Because we all have desire for happiness, for prosperity, for the continuity of the two. We can't get rid of the desire. The problem was, you know, if you look at the whole uh, this thing, the problem has been that you are trying to ensure the fulfillment of this desire of continuous happiness by way of physical facility, which does not happen. <coughs> Similarly, if you don't understand this desire of happiness and prosperity, then you have all kind of desires. That is the problem. So that clarity about what is my desire as a human being, you know, that clarity is required. And that's what we did yesterday that when we explored into this, we found that this is the desire of all of us sitting here. Right. Isn't it? This is the desire of all of us to have, to ensure happiness, <coughs> prosperity and continuity of the two. What do you think? Is there anybody who does not have this natural acceptance for this desire? it is there, the problem is not with the desire, the problem is with not having the clarity of what desire is and therefore having unbounded desire, number one. Number two, not having the clarity of how this desire of happiness can be fulfilled. That has been the problem. The desires are not the problem. So I have to have the right desire, so I have to understand what is my right desire and then I have to understand how I can ensure the fulfillment of this right desire.
I don't have this clarity, this understanding, then for human being we are doomed. Right? That is what we said the first day. Right understanding is the first priority for human being. So it is the basic need, not the highest need, you know. We have this Maslow's hierarchy of need, where it says self actualization is the last. If you understand human being properly, it is the first thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you are going to create problem for yourself and for everybody else. And that is what we are doing. So this right understanding in the self, okay, is the first and foremost thing to do for human being. And that's how the whole thing is, you know. Your child, you know, is curious to know, to understand, and know about the whole existence. If you start responding to his question, you will ask question about the whole existence. Very simple, you know. Somebody comes to your house, you will ask, who is it, my friend? Where has he come from? Where is Delhi in India? Where is India? And he has to go right after the existence. <laughs> he will not stop any sort of it. So that need is there in the child. Because we don't have the right understanding, we are not able to fulfill the need of this child to have right understanding. And we are giving them 10 to 15 years of education, okay, without really talking about the issues, right? the real issues, the issue of right understanding, the issue of relationship. We are not talking about, okay, to the children, right, in the process of education for 10 to 15 years, which is spending, right, is offering him, himself to you with the belief that what you know is right and what you do is right and which is not right. That's so, right desire is what is important. And we are saying the right desire can be investigated, found out okay, on the basis of your natural acceptance. This is another point which I have to clarify a little. In fact, I have left to keep clarifying this many times. Okay. This natural acceptance. Okay. <coughs> I must mention a few things about this natural acceptance to draw your attention towards it. <coughs> One important observation about this natural acceptance is that it is intact in all of us. And it is invariant. It does not change right, by your preconditioning. Uncorrupted by your preconditioning. For example, yesterday when we asked what is naturally acceptable to you to be in relationship or to be in opposition, the answer was you know, to be in relationship. Despite the fact that we have been you know, giving this deconditioning to the child that there is a struggle for survival, there is survival of the fittest and therefore you have to keep fighting. So that is your preconditioning. But despite this preconditioning, which you are giving for years to education, if you ask yourself, what is my natural acceptance? To be in relationship or to be in opposition? What is going to be the answer? To be in relationship. That means my natural acceptance for relationship is intact in me, it is invariant in me. It is uncorrupted by my preconditioning. This is one important observation about the natural acceptance. Not that you have different <coughs> conditioning, therefore you will have different natural acceptance. 
second major observation about this is universal in nature. <coughs> that is, it is true for all individuals. So, at least for 100 people sitting here, we could find out that the natural acceptance of each one of us sitting here is to be in relationship and not in, in opposition. So in that sense, it is universal. Right? So it is true at all time, today, tomorrow, yes, yesterday, okay. and all places. All is space, right? In India or in Bhutan or in America. So this is universal in nature. So this natural acceptance is something which is intact, invariant, which is universal. Right? And you can see that if we start verifying things on the basis of this, right, then the conclusion that we would reach to is going to be universal in nature because this is universal. So all our conclusions would be universal in nature because the very process and the very basis of you know finding out what is right, what is not right, okay, is natural acceptance, which in itself is universal in nature. So it will be common to all of us. It will be safe for all of us right? in all time, in all space. So this is what is important. And this is what I keep telling that the very interesting thing about what we are doing is that the whole process of self-exploration is purely subjective. Each one of us has to investigate into himself on his own right. We don't have to look at outside, no. look at the other. Okay? We have to look into ourselves and do the investigation, do the exploration. Okay? But the result that we get out of this exploration is objective in nature. So the process is subjective, but the results are objective. Okay? So, from yesterday, we are able to do this process, you know, initiate this process, of self exploration and each one of you are doing it for yourself, right? Or asking your next neighbors. You are doing this self exploration yourself, right? So it is a subjective process, but the result we are getting is objective in nature. It is in this sense that we can take it to education. In fact, the results are objective, right? Even though the process is objective, it is possible for us to take it to education. And that's what we are trying, right? That we can talk about each of these things, you know, the real things we are, and we can talk about it with every teacher, with every student, with every human being. So it is not something mysterious something secret. So the process is subjective to begin with. The outcome of this is objective. So this one important conclusion of this is the process of investigation. Is subjective. But the results of investigation is objective. And this is very interesting because it gives you the authenticity, authenticity and it also gives the authenticity to the results. <coughs> Both are taken care of. Okay. 
this was in response to that question. So let's move to the next question. Uh, I thought uh, the clarity on uh, that natural self acceptance is more confusing to me now. Yesterday, at least it was, I thought, uh, <laughs> yesterday, at least I thought it was, uh, you know, uh, subjective to uh, different traditional background or cultural background, what the thoughts, uh, your, or how you are brought up, etc. But now, when you say natural uh, acceptance uh, is intact, invariant, universal, what do you exactly mean? What is intact? What is invariant? What is universal? What do you actually mean by that? Uh, you also said uh, some terms like reality of self, mind. Uh, then you say the right desire. What does all this mean? And uh, my uh, I just thinking is uh, last night was we are still in the animal consciousness. We are dwelling still there in the sphere of animal consciousness. And what is it that uh, human beings uh, like uh, they go beyond this uh, relationship of happiness or unhappiness and just well, what is that uh, like human go beyond that? And the, the, the getting back is from yesterday's uh, discussion. You said fear of uh, animal inhuman things, actions, or behavior. And also, where does the, the another fear, like unseen fear of accident or inhuman, inhuman beings like it? Is there that such feeling, uh, such fear also? also. But then uh, we also said uh, being in harmony. Uh, being in harmony is. Uh, a solution, simple solution, be it uh, human, uh, inhuman, or whatsoever. But if you are able to coexist or be in harmony, that seems to be a kind of answer. But here, the intact, what is it? What do you mean by intact? What is uh, invariant? What do you mean by uh, universal? Yeah, I need to, you know, I uh, wanted to clarify this natural acceptance because uh, most of the time, uh, the equality to the conditions. So, I had to make this statement. So, let me clarify it again. <coughs> I took this example that your natural acceptance has to look within yourself and find out. Is it what relationship, being in relationship or being in opposition? Relationship. So simple to find out. This remains intact. Right? It remains invariant. What it means is that it does not change by time, by place, by the conditionings that you have in different societies, in different cultures. Right? So this acceptance for being in relationship will be there in regard of what is your reconditioning not prevailing in this society. <coughs> so here people are there, you know, from different background. Okay. And when you ask this question about your natural acceptance to be in relationship or to be in opposition, what do you think? The answers are going to be same or different? It is the same. Right? So my natural acceptance remains uncorrupted by my preconditioning which are prevailing in this society. And that's what I was saying that when we came to uh, you know understand this, okay, we thought why not try it out with all kind of people and see whether it is really intact and invariant. So we tried with all kind of people, you know, the Adivasis, the farmer, the educated, the uneducated, the prisoners. Right? It sends all kind of people. And we found that this remains same for all of them. It is intact, it is invariant, in regard of their preconditions prevailing in this society. So that is what I mean, that it is there in you, okay? it is intact in you, it remains invariant in you, in you, despite all your preconditioning, which are, you know, kind of dumped down to you by education, by society, by parents and so on. So that is what I mean. When I am saying intact and invariant, you may or may not pay attention to it. 
And that is what is happening, right? Though it is there, you are not paying attention to it. All that we are doing is we are trying to draw your attention towards it. When we draw the attention towards it, you are able to see it for yourself. And you are confident about it. And I keep telling that the major achievement of this workshop is to start this process of exploration in you. Okay? Whereby you can see that there is something, you know, in you which is intact, which is invariant, which is universal, right? which we are calling by the name of natural acceptance. And if that is the case, then you can be authentic about finding out what is right for you, for other, for everybody, right? and what is not right for you, and for the other, and for everybody. That authentic, you know, understanding of things is possible for me because I have this natural you know, acceptance which is intact in me, which is invariant in me and which is universal in nature. Of course, this will lead to many questions you know, on our preconditions. That will come anyway. It may be very disturbing also. But then, we have to go through it because the preconditionings you know, are not enough to ensure continuity of happiness. We need to investigate into this thing called natural acceptance, which is there in each one of us. And you can see all these days, you know, these eight days that all our process of investigation is subjective in nature. But the result that you will get out of it is objective in nature. Because this is objective in nature, this can become a part of education. If it was subjective, right, then it cannot become the part of education. So we can talk to hundred people, right? Leave it for every one of them to investigate and find out. Okay? And the answers will be the same. In the universe that is going to be the objective answer. This major dichotomy you know, of subjectivity and objectivity can also be resolved. One of the dichotomy which we have been you know, dealing with for a very long time. So, could we say that natural acceptance is like our basic human nature, that which is pure and compassionate and unchanging, and that happiness is actually when we are in contact with that basic human nature? that it's a state of being and connection that is unchanged by our circumstances or the <coughs> situation surrounding us? Yeah, unchanged. <coughs> and the happiness is to be in line with this, you know, the basic nature of human being. Yeah, that's what essentially we are saying. That this is something which is the basic nature of human being and which is there in each one of us as a part of our being. Only thing is that we have not been paying attention to it. So one thing we have to do is to pay attention to it. But second thing is to make sure that my way of being is in accordance with my natural acceptance. Yes, that is what we have said, what I am and what is naturally acceptable to me. If there is a harmony between the two, I am in a state of happiness. When there is a contradiction between the two, I am in a state of unhappiness. So essentially, happiness or unhappiness is an indicator of the fact right, whether we are in accordance with our natural acceptance or basic nature, you know, human nature or we are against it. So it is in that sense this is defined, you know. 
to be in harmony is happiness. And this harmony ultimately would result to this, you know, relate to this. <coughs>